Hi everybody, it's Barry from Turning the Page again, and so good to be with you. Um, recently in my conversations with uh, people, um, and if you want a conversation with me, by the way, just um, email me, barry at turningthepage.co.nz, and um, we can have a Zoom chat, be great. <laughs> really like to um, talk to people who, all over the world actually, um, about uh, mental health and spiritual formation, that sort of stuff. But recently in my conversations with people, I've been giving them three little phrases to meditate on and speaking to themselves. And these are the three phrases. I'm loved, I'm held, and I'm known. And so um, when the anxiety starts to build up and the, the pressure starts to, to drown, depression starts to drown, these are <coughs> three phrases that I think can quietly bring some peace. It's the um, love of compassion. It's the, um, for the hurting self. It's the, the being held while the emotional storm rages. And it's the, the being known <laughs> despite all the, the flaws. And it's what I hope um, a good friend can offer. But it's also what I believe God in gl full glory speaks to us that you, the listener, the viewer, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that you are loved, you are held, and you are known. And so often in my, I, my conversations, I actually just really, really want people just to know that, that they are loved, that they are held, and that they are known. And in our last post, we uh, looked at the question, does God hate me? And I suggested 12 questions that I, I sort of have running in the back of my mind when someone has that question. And so when someone does um, ask that question or speaks a conclusive um, phrase like, God does hate me, into the universe, I, I sort of um, feel a level of pain. There's a level of pain under the surface of what they're saying. And perhaps there have been multiple traumas um, and intrusions sort of laid upon their soul. And this is not so much an intellectual question, looking for academic and theoretical responses. More this is a kind of response or a question of the heart. Does God hate me? Um, and yet so often this question <laughs> gets answered with the intellectual. You know, verses are quoted, arguments are laid out different theologies are discussed, um, all of which I could do here, <laughs> but none of these, I believe, would uh, come to answer the cry of the hurting heart, the heart that needs to know in a very real way that it is loved and held and known. Now, the verses, the arguments, the theologies can help, but at a heart level, we really just want to be known as ones that are loved. Um, it's, but I'll, I'll share a few verses. One of them is John 3.16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. First memory verse in, <laughs> in Sunday school you've got to learn. <laughs> and then what about Lamentations 3.22? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Never, never ceases, never comes to an end. And uh, John fifteen thirteen says, "Greater love has no man has no one than this to lay down one's life for a friend," and that's what of course Jesus did. And Psalm thirty verse five, which says, "For his anger is but a moment, but his favor is but for a lifetime." And there's that thought that yeah, God does get angry, <laughs> um, but his favor is like, like an eternal. And then um, there's another passage from uh, 1 John 4, 8 to 10. It says, My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. <laughs> so you can't know him if you don't love. And this is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so we might live through him. This is the kind of love we're talking about. Not that we were once upon, upon it, 
Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. So, so does God love me? Yeah. Oh. Like at the time, you know, as I'm right sharing this, it's January 2022, and there I looked up on this little tool I've got on the website, um, and there were 2,200 searches made each month on Google asking, does God love me? And that phrase, God hates me, well, that's searched 1,900 times every month. Yeah, and there's a cry in me, um, there's a heart cry out there. We want to know if we're loved and that we have value and purpose, that there is beauty and we're not invisible. In our, in our broken world existence, uh, we need the reassurance of eternity shouting a big, I love you, <laughs> across the skies and sort of seeing it trickle into our hearts. Um, and I think that's, does, that's how it does happen. It, it's sort of got to trickle in there somehow. For me, um, I want to tell more people that both I and God love them. They need to hear it. But when we say the words, I love you, they can be so easily <coughs> misconstrued. Um, when I say the words I love you to someone, it's because I see something of the nature and character of a loving God in them. And this needs to be celebrated and explored. Uh, something of the God nature uh, in me has to burst out the words I love you. In his book, A Connecting Larry Crabb, tells a story of an encounter with the head with uh, the author and Brennan Manning. And here's, here's what the quote. When I know that you love me, that you believe in me, that you recognize something terrific in me, that you long to see more released, I'm more inclined to receive you, to let you pour into my life. I'm going to read that again because it's pretty good. <laughs> when I know that you love me, this is Larry speaking, when I know that you love me, that you believe in me, that you recognize something terrific in me, that you long to see more released, I'm more inclined to receive you, to let you pour something into my life. And he goes on, that's what happened in a conversation with Brendan Manning. Some time ago I had the opportunity to chat with Brendan, uh, my friend and writer of profound books on the spiritual life, and he certainly was. Uh, during our conversation, I impulsively blurted out, Brennan, I want time with you to sort, talk seriously about something in my life. I need your help. <laughs> Always gracious, Brennan immediately agreed. I later wondered what had triggered that unplanned spontaneous request. It's true that I was plagued by a certain battle that I deeply, and that I deeply respect and love Brennan, but I hadn't intended to ask him for help. The, the request simply appeared. I suppose that's what happens when you feel safe, isn't it? That's from me. <laughs> As I reflected, he says, uh, two memories returned. Several years earlier, Brennan had told me of his spiritual director's curious habit. Whenever he saw Brennan after an extended absence, he jumped up and down with delight. <laughs> I remember smiling. I pictured an elderly gentleman walking down a deserted beach toward an agreed-upon meeting point and spotting Brennan from a distance hopping three or four times. The image amused me. It also drew me. A year later, Rachel, my wife Rachel and I tumbled out of a crowded elevator into a hotel lobby teeming with conference participants. Across the way, I caught a glimpse of Brennan's white hair and unmistakable smile. As I leaned toward Rachel to tell her I'd just seen Brennan, he turned and saw us. Immediately, he jumped up and down. I was warm to the bottom of my heart. There's some Larry Crabb. God jumps up and down with excitement and joy when he comes towards towards them. Okay? When we come towards them. I'll read that again. God jumps up and down with excitement and joy when we come towards them. Alright? I was talking with someone the other day for the first time and I was filled with jumping up and down joy as I got to know them. Oh, look, I want to be the kind of person that jumps up and down and when I meet someone. Will it freak them out? I hope so, <laughs> but in a good way. We are to be people who rush towards each other's prodigal woundedness with old man passion and motherly tenderness. But we are to see beyond the problems to the beauty 
and the purpose shown deep, sown deep within each other eternities ago. Perhaps then others will know something of God's love for them. Jumping up and down will cut through the head knowledge and help fill the heart's vacuum. In response to the questions from part one from the previous week, here are some suggestions, some suggestions to move from God does does God hate me to knowing God loves me. I want to know God's love for me and and you in overwhelming tidal wave completeness. So number one, make a decision to open the heart. Look, are you ready to receive love? Have you prayed to ask God to come into your heart and transform it from the inside out? God wants you to ask. God will never trample across your freedom to choose. It's a heart decision that you have to make. Do you want the God who jumps up and down to come and dance in your life? <laughs> I do. All right. It's going to be a party. <laughs> Number two, get a better group of friends. Seriously question if the religious organisation, commonly called the church, promotes a God that jumps up and down, or one that sits on a judge's rostrum, or is distant and aloof. It might be that you have to leave. As the saying goes, you know, birds of the feather gather together. But do you have to be that kind of bird? I want to have friends who will jump up and down to me and I to them. Number three, understand that spiritual formation is a journey. No one has arrived yet. We are all in different stages of spiritual formation, such as what James Fowler in the previous um, post points to. And this is okay, but we don't want to become stuck in one stage. Holy Spirit is always alluring and calling us on. It's a mystery. It's not a program or a formula. There's no blueprint or roadmap. Maybe it's more of a kind of a dance. <laughs> Number four, get a better translation of the Bible. Find a Bible that is modern and user-friendly, easy to understand. Look, I, I use the New Revised Standard Version uh, for study, but recommend the, the Living Bible or the Message for devotional reading. Five, focus on God's love and grace. Look, where you focus is where you'll go. Meditate on stories in the Bible that speak to the love and grace of God. The story of the loving father, that's the prodigal son. And the story of the dehumanized man, that's the good Samaritan. <laughs> Number six, tell yourself the truth. I am loved, I am held, I am known. Look, as part of your thinking compass, that, that, that um, I have it as an audio version, but <clears throat> what you repeatedly tell yourself every day. Speak those words to yourself. I am loved, I am held, I am known. You know, record yourself saying those words and listen to them every day. Number seven, look for the movements. Look, um, as you read the Bible stories and as you reflect on them, look for the movements from, from justice to mercy to grace. Notice the calling yourself to move from justice to mercy to grace. And realize that God is full of grace, jumping up and down <laughs> towards you. I hear some quotes to think about. Love acts like a giant magnet that pulls out of us like iron filings, every recorded injury or scar. Terence Real. Divine love is compassionate, tender, luminous, totally self-giving, seeking no reward, unifying everything. Thomas Keating. God is not a love God is a lover, not a rapist. God cannot walk past an empty heart and do nothing. Larry Crabb. It is God's love for us that He not only gives us His word, but also lends us His ear. So it is His work that we do for our brother when we learn to listen to him. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Some questions. Number one, what are the words that uh, your heart most wants to hear? Number two, what would it be like to have someone jump up and down in joy when they see you? <laughs> it would freak you out. <laughs> Number three, are you open to love? Are you open to receiving uh, God's love for you? Hey, um, I hope you found this helpful. Love to hear from you. Send me an email, barry at turningthepage.co.nz. Um, and just a big thank you to those people who give a little donation 
towards um, my expenses of doing this this work. Uh, it's really important. Um, yeah, so if you want to know more about that, come over to turningthepage.co.nz forward slash support. And there's various ways in which you can you can help me keep on doing this good stuff. Okay, until next week, uh, know you are loved, know you are held, and know that you're known. Okay, bye.